Okay, so this question of the day asked us to look at a geometry concept, but in, in light of some algebraic concepts. So I love problems like this because they allow us at once, you know, we're all trying to study, um, get done with our GEDs as quickly as possible, be as um, equipped as we can possibly be before the tests. And problems like this allow us to stretch both our geometry muscles and our algebra muscles at once. Uh, who doesn't want to be able to work two muscle groups at once? Um, so we can get done faster. So let's take a look at this. So it says use the GED formula sheet to find the radius of the circle to the nearest tenth of an inch that has an area of 15 square inches. So nice little cheat that they told me here use the GED formula sheet. They wouldn't necessarily say that on the test itself, but um, a great hint here that I um, could consult the formula sheet is this idea of area. So what you're going to see when you go to look at the GED formula sheet is that the whole first two thirds of it is all these geometric formulas. There's perimeter formulas, area, surface area, and volume. Those are all um, measurements that we do on shapes. So they're from geometry and yet being on the formula sheet means we're going to get like an algebra roadmap to how to do these problems. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to go consult the GED formula sheet and find the formula that has to do with area, but area of what shape? Well, a circle. Let's go do that. So I've got that open over here. So I go to look and like I told you, the first two thirds of this sheet, oh, maybe it's just half. But anyway, we see area, perimeter, surface area, formulas and volume. So I want area and area of a circle. There is that formula right there. Okay, and that's what I'm going to go copy down on my paper, that formula. A equals, and you see that little symbol right there, some students don't know how to read it, that's pi, and this is r, and we read that little floating two is squared. So A equals pi r squared. Uh, let's go write that over here. So our formula is A equals, and pi looks like two little lines with a wavy top here, and then r, that's the letter r, little r, squared. So what this formula tells me here is if I'd like to find area, I need to take pi, which is an actual number, we'll talk about that in just a second, and multiply it when two things are shoved together in math, they're multiplying, so pi times r squared, um, or r to the second power. Okay, let's break this sucker down here. The first thing that you need to know is pi is an actual number. Now, it's what's known as an irrational number, meaning its decimal form goes on and on forever. It's actually a number that would go on and on forever and never end. Um, it's You've probably heard that pi is 3.14, kind of, not exactly, it's actually 3.14159, and I don't have any more of it memorized, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. Because we do not care uh, to use a number that goes on and on forever, it makes our lives really messy, we will often use what's known as an approximation, a good enough uh, stand in and so that is why a lot of students have memorized that 3.14 is pi because that's the approximation that we usually use so that's a number and good news is is if you forget this it's actually written on your formula sheet take a look down here see under circumference of a circle right here look what they tell you pi is approximately 3.14 that's what that wavy equal sign means approximately so it does not have to be a mystery to you okay now, A stands for area, R stands for radius, and the nice thing about a formula is we can use this formula to find either unknown. We could know the area and need to find the radius, or we could know the radius and need to find the area. Let's take a look at this problem, what, what information we have. Uh, what we see here is that we're going to find the radius. The radius is the unknown, the thing we don't know, but we do know that the area is 15. Now a lot of students mess this up because they want to just plug into this side of the formula, but be careful. If it's the area that I know, and it is, it's this A here that's going to turn into a 15. Okay, so I don't, A is not a mystery, A is 15 because the area is 15, so I write 15 under A. 
Now, when you plug into formulas, you do not change symbols, so I still have my equal sign. Um, but you can exchange pi for its approximation, and in fact, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to call pi 3.14. And notice, I write right underneath that number. Right under pi, I write 3.14. Now, the next thing I need is r. r is a mystery to us. It's the thing we don't know. We don't know the radius of this circle. It's what we're finding. And in algebra, whenever you don't know something, you use a letter. So we're just going to keep r r. He is the unknown. He stays a variable, a letter. And of course, we have no permission to lose information like this square. So this is where we're starting with this 15 equals 3.14 uh, times r squared. And a lot of students then panic. They don't know what to do. Well, what you're going to notice here is that there's no simplifying that I can do. There's no four words work. There's no putting numbers together. If you take a look at the left-hand side of the equation, so look left to the equal sign, there's no operation here. It's a number by itself, 15. If you take a look at the right-hand side of the equation, well, there's two operations here. There's the multiplying and there's the raising to a power, but I'm not able to do either because I don't know what r is. How can I square something I don't know? How can I multiply with something that I don't know? Because r is a mystery, I can't do any of this work. And so what I'm actually going to do is right from the start here, I'm going to start solving. Solving is the process of isolating the variable. and Isolating, of course, just means getting it alone. So what I'm, my goal here is to get this letter alone. I want to get R alone. Okay. Now, remember that when we solve, we work our order of operations backwards. So instead of going groupings first, then exponents, then multiply, divide, then add, subtract, I am going to move backwards when I'm solving. I'm literally working backwards, taking things away, and so I'll work through order of operations backwards. So there's no addition, subtraction in this problem, but there is multiplication division. This number here, 3.14, is multiplying with r, and so this is the first number I'm going to get rid of. Okay, And we know to solve, you do the opposite or the inverse of what you've been told. So the opposite of timesing by 3.14 is dividing by 3.14. So I'm going to divide this side by 3.14. And the most basic rule of solving in algebra is you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. So if I divided my right-hand side by 3.14, I need to come over here and divide my left side by 3.14. Now, this is calculator work. That's super nasty. Um, I'm not even trying to do that in my head. You can pull up your GED calculator. I'll pull up my handy-dandy little computer calculator here. And remember to go in the exact order it's presented because this is a divide by bar. So I'm going to go 15 divided by 3.14. And I get this whole long nasty thing, and I hate ugly decimals. So I'm just going to, in my scratch work, I'm just going to say this is 4.7 dot dot dot. I don't even really care about the rest of the decimals. I'll keep them in my calculator. And that whole thing is equal to r squared. Now, a lot of students will stop right here, but you can't stop right here because r is not alone. There's still something happening to r. He's squaring. I need this r to be standing alone. And so um, uh, we can see that's an exponent there. Now, a, a lot of students go, I don't know what the opposite of square is, Kate. Well, let's remember the opposite of add is subtract or the inverse. The inverse of multiply is divide. But you might remember that the inverse of squaring is square rooting. So if I want to get rid of a square, I have got to square root. So I'm going to square root this side of the equation. Now, the great news is you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of that side. Now, on this side, square and square root will cancel. So my r will be left alone on this right-hand side. And on this side, this is the calculator work to do. Now, this is a place where the GED calculator works quite differently than my little calculator. My little calculator, I can just take my number and press square root, and it'll give me an answer. But that won't work in the GED ca calculator. So let's give ourselves a little note of how we're going to have to do this in the GED calculator. So to take the square root, what you're going to need to do is take the square root of the answer. But the problem is, if you go looking for that square root sign, this little sign right here on your GED calculator, you're going to find it in green above the X squared button. Anytime you want a green button on the GED calculator, you have to hit that green second button. So you're going to hit second, and then you're going to hit that X squared button. So it looks like um, an X with a little floating 2. Um, 
x squared. So that'll pull up your square root symbol. When you hit second x squared, you'll get this little symbol. You should. Okay, yours may or may not have a parentheses in it, depending on what mode you're in in your calculator, don't worry. But then the next thing you want is you want this number that was in your calculator. Remember that long number, 4.777, you know, all this thing, 4.77707. You don't want to type all that. You don't want to re. So what you want to do is pull that back up in the calculator. And you can by hitting the answer button um, down at the bottom. What you're going to notice about the answer button, though, is it's also green. So you're going to have to do the second button again. You have to hit second every time uh, you want to use a green key. So we'll press second and x squared to get that square root, and then second and answer, and it'll and it'll bring up our answer so that we can take the square root of our answer. And then once you've done that, go ahead and hit enter, and you should get what I get over here when I just hit my square root key, which is 2.18, yada, yada, yada. So let's go write that down. And notice I'm saying 2.18, yada, yada, yada. I don't know how much of this number that I care about yet um, until I consult the um, rounding directions. So I have like 28156. So a lot of times I'll say to my students, for your final act, round. It's kind of like um, reducing a fraction. Um, I round at the very last step. Don't round along the way or you'll lose data. So let's go take a look here. Um, I see some rounding language to the nearest tenth of an inch. So remember right after the decimal place, the very next place is the tenths, which means I'm going to cut my number off right here. Now, it's super important. This is not the number you look at to see if you need to round. It's the next number, the one that's about to die. You have to decide before it dies if it's big enough to matter. So take a look at this number 8. Is it 5 or larger? Is it past the halfway point with numbers? Indeed, it is. Of course, this is larger than 5. And so um, let me just write that down. The question you're asking yourself is 5 or larger. And of course, the answer is yes. And so because of that, what's going to happen is this number is going to round up the last digit. It's going to round up this last digit. So I'm still going to lose the 8, but as its final act before it dies, it's going to make its buddy bigger. And so I'm going to say that that radius uh, let me, is about 2.2. 2.2. I'm trying to make my nice handwriting here. Okay, and that's going to be good enough for me. That's a decent approximation of my radius. I rounded to where they wanted me to. That is my final answer. One thing in geometry, though, is I need a unit. 2.2 what? 2.2 ducks, dollars, inches, feet? I have no idea. Consult the problem. Notice I was in inches. So this is 2.2 inches. And there are students who say to me, Kate, shouldn't it be square inches since this is an area problem? What a good question. Area is measured in square units. Area is measured in square units. You're right. Like square feet, square meters, square yards, square whatever. In this case, it would be inches. But we, this is not the area we found. What did we find? radius. Radius is what's known as a dimension. A dimension. Length, width, uh, radius, all the lines on a shape that we measure. So lines on a shape. Uh, and just by definition, a dimension, because it's a line, is one uh, dimensional and therefore must be a linear measurement. And so it'll be measured in plain old inches meters, yards, feet, no square at all. And so there you go. My final answer, the radius is about 2.2 inches.